Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is focusing on the Bell P-59 Era Comet, an American built jet aircraft which first flew in late 1942. In War Thunder this is represented as a tier 4 aircraft with a BR of 5.3 and this BR and tier is fairly unusual for a jet aircraft, but when you consider the performance this placing is fairly understandable, with it in line with aircraft such as the P-51D when it comes to performance, albeit with slightly better maneuverability. The armament consists of a triple Browning M250 cal loadout and then a single 37mm M10 cannon. These guns are all mounted in the nose which allows for very good accuracy at both longer and shorter ranges without the gun convergence setting being a major concern. The top speed and climb rate is also comparable to most of its adversaries, in fact some aircraft such as the TA-152, the G-56 and the BF-109K-4 will usually outclimb the P-59 and actually can marginally outspeed it in both level flight and in a dive. Although of course if you end up in a turning engagement with any of these aircraft, you will be able to get the edge over them fairly easily. The pitching maneuverability, the elevator on the P-59 is absolutely brilliant and is very good in a turn fight, although it is worth noting that the roll rate not quite as much due to of course quite a big wing surface and it requires a lot of energy to move that on the roll axis. But generally with maneuverability the pitching of the aircraft really does bring it in, making it a very good turn fighter. Now the current BR 5.3, the only other jet you will see is the Heinkel 162 and you know, during my entire time playing the P-59 I never actually came across one of these, so it's likely going to be quite a rare sight and even if you do see it, well, I would consider it less of a threat than most of the props you're going to be facing. The P-59 does also have a fully model cockpit which looks very nice and is definitely good news for any of you sim pilots out there or people that generally like looking in the cockpit view. It is also worth noting that the P-59A is a premium aircraft and as far as RP gain goes, it makes the same as the premium P-51Ds at 498% research efficiency, making the P-59 a reasonable option to grind out the US air tree up to tier 5, after which the research points do receive a penalty. So with that introduction covering most of what you will need to know, let's go and get into some gameplay in air RB battles and see just how well this thing stacks up. So our first game is on Sicily and of course this aircraft does start with a takeoff from the ground. There are a few maps though where it will get an air spawn along with the rest of your team. One thing I just want to note quickly is that the first two games will have their actual game audio muted because the recording glitched out and it sounds absolutely painful to listen to so that's going to be muted but the third game that I put in will have the audio because when I did that one it actually worked. So with that said let's get into the actual gameplay. So on this game the cloud base was fairly low so I was at cloud base and then I noticed a group of enemy BF-109s harassing a friendly P-47. I dive in in an attempt to help and you know those 109s they really want that P-47, really a perfect opportunity to move in. And I initially decide to go for the final 109, he pulls up and I set up a rather shoddy attempt to shoot him down doesn't work. So then I turn around, I begin to go back, and I see a second 109 doing a similar thing, but this time I can get a much more well set up approach, and I knock him out using the 37mm. I then turn back in, Dornier 335 attempting a head on, I pull out just before he fires his shots, and then, you know, he's coming around again, I decide to pull up just to prevent him getting a clean shot, and by doing this manoeuvre I actually get onto his 6, so I get down behind him, and you know, he's flying quite low, quite slow, nice easy target, and it's quite a big aircraft as well, so that was a really easy second kill for me. After that, another 335 dives in, eventually I end up chasing him, the chase lasts about 1 or 2 minutes, he's just flying off the edge of the map, and eventually this thing, you know, it has lackluster acceleration, but eventually I do get up to speed and I begin to catch up, and then he panics and he tries to turn. In a 335 or D9 or any of those, do not try turning with a P-59, it will not work. I get on his 6, I just stay on the inside of his turn, pump a shot into the wing, and that is him down. After that we only have two enemy aircraft left, one of which I am fairly worried about in a 109 and the other of which is in a Fokker Wolf 190, both of which I can outmaneuver and luckily for me both of them meet me in the cloud at close range 
where they don't really have an opportunity to run. This means they have to attempt to turn fight, which, you know, despite my crappy leading on my guns here, where I'm basically missing most of my shots, I still am able to kill them just by using this thing's advantage in a turn. As you can see, the 109 desperately trying to get me off of his 6. His roll rate is better, but his pitching really isn't, so I can stay on him quite quite well. And there you go, boom. That's his tail plane gone. He is still flying, but just to make sure, pump some more shots in, get that final kill, and then I begin to turn around, where I then shortly after come across the Focker Wolf 190. This is a D variant of the 190. Definitely not a turn fighter. Uh, D13, in fact, which is the premium one. He tries to do a pass, but I sort of turn around, continue turning, and stop him doing that. We go into a slight diving turn here, and as you can see, I just pull around onto his tail very easily. Not too many G-forces acting on the pilot at all, so it was a fairly easy engagement. And there we go. On fire, missing his wing. That is him down, and that is the end of the game. Five kills, and that was in fact the last game I did before making this video in the P-59. A good, solid ace game there. Now that game did go quite well, and as you will see, I did not gain any damage to my aircraft whatsoever. No one actually got a hit on me. This game, quite the opposite. Uh, I was hit quite a bit in this game, and was only just able to survive. Here we have a P-47, a Hitler Bolt, uh, P-47D on the German tech tree, it's a premium of course. Goes for a head-on, and he hits me. Um, I basically dodged the head-on in an attempt to get onto his 6 after he goes past me, but he did get a hit on me, and again, he turns much earlier than I was expecting, getting a few more hits, though luckily no damage on that pass. But then he continues to fly for a bit too long, allowing me to get onto his six. He goes into the vertical. I have bad energy retention, but then again, he's flying in a somewhat straight line. Not a good plan. Luckily for me, there were one other uh, enemy aircraft in the near area, as I did stall my aircraft out, but I was able to pull over and get back to speed. I then went to lower altitudes, obviously with a friendly P-51 here, being chased by a BF-109G. So I begin to dive in, the P-51 dodges him. The G is going very quick, I wouldn't be surprised if he had some sort of control lock right now due to his speed, but that allows me to get onto his 6 very easily. Critical hit there and I just really go in, pilot snipe, that is my second kill of the game. Then we have a P-47 coming in, another Hitler bolt. So he's coming in pretty quick, uh, initially not going for me, but then he pulls onto a head-on. I do a bit of a risky uh, turn out there, almost hit the ground, getting pretty close, but I am able to survive it. And really, he goes for another friendly, allowing me, while he's distracted, to get onto his six, and really just get some long-range hits. And then rather than running away, as he did have a speed advantage, he begins to turn. Again, if you think you have a speed advantage over the P-59, it is bad acceleration. If you have the speed, you can run away. The P-47 just thought, you know what, I'm just going to turn, presuming that, oh, it's a jet, it's not maneuverable. Just because it's a jet doesn't mean it's not maneuverable. Now, here's another 109G. Uh, I do do a head-on with him. I get hit a little bit, but not too badly. So I continue to turn around. And, you know, he's being a bit iffy. Uh, I get a shot in that sort of turnaround position. Just a hit. Uh, not too much damage done there. I would presume it was just a 50 cal that hit and not the 37 mil. And, you know, he sets the fire to a friendly P-51. Uh, they sort of exchange kills, you could say. And then I have another guy coming in. A little roll maneuver. Again, pretty close to the ground. He does hit me. But, again, it takes the hit. Not too much damage. Go up a bit to prevent him getting his guns on. And really he just flies right underneath me and he continues to turn rather than reversing, allowing me to pull around nice and slowly onto his tail. And I believe he actually tries to crash to stop me getting the kill. I get a hit and it gives me the kill. So that was very close there. You almost got away with it, but not quite. And after that, we did come across another 109 who we had a long engagement with. I got pretty da badly damaged. I lost an engine, but I did survive the game, got some assists, got four kills. Generally a pretty solid match there. Now I find that game really did demonstrate uh, a thing that I really enjoy with the P-59, that's really the close quarters combat, sort of low speed, close to the enemy, and especially in that later engagement with the 109 who tried to crash, you will notice at times I did stall out, which allowed him to fly away, and actually allowed me to then pull around onto his tail, and what you will find is the P-59 stall speed is in most cases slower than majority of the prop aircraft you will face, of course due to the very big wing. This is incredibly fun, you can really just fly the aircraft just on the edge of the stall, let the enemy go in front of you, and then get onto their tail, get some shots off, shoot them down. Really I do love that, the close quarters engagement is so fun with this aircraft, as well as just generally turn fighting, really. With jets, I like jets because they're cool, they're jet fighters, everyone loves them. But the thing that I don't like is that turn fighting is not usually a thing. At least with the sort of top jets, most people are like, oh, why are you turn fighting? 
I really enjoy turn fighting, so this aircraft, I really love playing it with the turn fighting stuff, and really this next game, especially the last kill in this next game, is one that I really did enjoy doing just because of turn fighting, getting that advantage in the dogfight, and then shooting down the enemy aircraft. So this game is on Norway, and I start off with a BF-109G2. Again, he tried to dive away from me, locked up his controls, can't really turn that well, and I go in, rip his wing off, he's dead. Then I find a TA-152. Again, I find a lot of German players just try to run away, and then once you get your speed up, you catch up to them, and then they're like, ha, great idea, let's turn fight. Even though, obviously, well, the P-59 is far more maneuverable, and it is understandable, they haven't seen it in combat yet. But, you know, it's, it's very fun to have them think that they have an advantage when they really don't. So I go in, TA-152, he does have a roll advantage, but, you know, in terms of pitching, I can just follow him all day. And there we go, 37mm, high explosive round, bang, he's dead. Now, this kill is the one that I really love doing. This is one of my favorite dogfights that I've done in this aircraft so far. Last enemy, J2M, Japanese aircraft. Not exactly a great turn fighter, not on the levels of the A6M0, but it is a decent aircraft. It's more of an interceptor, but it is a good aircraft. I myself do have a few versions of this in the game, and I do enjoy playing it. Now, he comes in, fires some shots. I'm able to just swerve around, dodge those shots, and really so sort of begin to black out, but then I just use a slight vertical maneuver to get onto E6, He's pulling up, missed my first shots, but that's fine, I have plenty of ammunition left, and really, I can just stay on his 6 all day. He's going along, get a, a no-scope critical there, tail damage, he's going to turn even worse now, and now, you know, he goes up again, he flips over, tries to sort of reverse, go into a, uh, into a downwards dive, boom, dead. Stayed on his 6 the whole time, his roll rate was better, but really, there was no way he could shake me there, and that was the last kill of that game, 3 kills. It went fairly well. Again, no damage to my aircraft. I was not hit once during any of those engagements. And that really, that J2 dogfight just sort of encapsulates what I love about this aircraft. Just the dominance in a dogfight is so good with this airplane. And that's what I really like. That's why with the other American premiums, I don't really, I don't really like them so much. The P-51s, you can use them in the dogfight, but there are things that will easily outmaneuver them. P-47s, it's a big heavy aircraft, you can dogfight with it, but it's much better at boom and zoom. Really, this thing though, even if you're facing A6M Zeros, which do have a slight advantage in a dogfight, albeit, you can actually kill them, you can do quite well. If you know how to play the aircraft and you use its strengths to their fullest, you can really kill anything in a dogfight if you know what you're doing, and that's what I really love about this aircraft. Really, the dive speed and the maximum sort of rip speed of the aircraft does mean you can use it for boomings. You can basically use it for anything. So, to finish this review up, what I'm going to say is, you know, this is this is a it's a jet aircraft at tier four. Fair enough. It's just a little unique thing for you collectors out there. But if you're someone looking to grind the US tree and you want a premium, I I would say get this aircraft. It is very good. You can use it for whatever. Of course, if you're a fairly new player, you're not exactly going to be one of those pros who goes out and says, "Oh, I have to use a boom and zoom with this aircraft." I have to turn fight with this aircraft. You can do whatever. The the only negative I would say is that the acceleration and the top speed is at least comparable with similar aircraft at this BR, which isn't even really a negative. The guns are brilliant, nose mounted, lots of firepower. The 50 cows are good at all ranges, they'll generally do a fair amount of damage, but then the 37 mil, you get a solid hit with that, that will kill the enemy aircraft. You know, good guns, The obviously the gun convergence doesn't matter all that much, they're right in the middle of the aircraft, so it's quite easy at longer ranges. The top speed itself, decent, you can, at least in games for me, I reach around 550 miles an hour before wing ripping decides to become an issue, which isn't too bad for an aircraft at this BR. Climb rate, you know, if you, if you side climb, you can get to 15k, 20k feet before you really encounter the enemy. I usually flank around them coming from behind, sort of a bit of a surprise ambush type attack. That works quite well. If you can catch the enemy aircraft when they're already engaged with other friendlies in a turn fight, you can easily get on their six and take them out, which is what I generally prefer to do. And also doing head-ons. Go into a head-on at long range, and then when you're about, you know, when the enemy starts firing, make sure your aircraft is upside down as long as you're not too low. Just pull out, do a negative pull out, they won't be able to push down fast enough to shoot you, you can get underneath them, turn around, get onto their 6. Always works. From time to time they may get some hits, but I generally find this aircraft can take the hits. The guns are good, it is a fast aircraft, and the maneuverability is nice. Now of course, uh, with the um, 
you will get this aircraft at least in the current event that it's in for the 10th mark of distinction. For the 11th one, there's a secondary camo, looks to be an olive drab paint scheme. I don't mind that camo, it looks quite nice. I'll personally with mine probably stick with the silver and you know, it's a decent aeroplane. I like, I, I have actually really enjoyed playing this, so I would certainly advise getting it for anyone playing this event. Anyway though, I think I'll end it there. Sorry for being a bit rambly about just how good this aircraft is, although I really did enjoy it. If you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel. I will be covering the other two Operation Heat vehicles that I haven't yet covered, being the BT-7 and the BF-110. Already done a review of the Albul 74, so that will be of course linked in the description. And I may look at the boats at some point. Anyway though, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.